Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, What's New with ARC Memo Manager? And hi, I'm Judy Howard in ARC Business Operations, and I'm really happy to have here with me today as our guest presenters. I have Sarah Sager, who's the Product Manager for ARC Memo Manager, and I have Daryl Scott, who is our senior trainer, and they will be going over kind of some new uh, kind of look and feel and then just kind of giving an overview of what Memo Manager is. So I encourage everyone to ask questions um, this afternoon, and you can do that by going to the right-hand side of your screen and where there it says questions. Just type those in, and we're going to try to get to as many of those as we can today. And we'll interject questions as they come up throughout this presentation this afternoon. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to um, Daryl and Sarah to begin the presentation. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the ARC Memo Manager webinar. So ARC Memo Manager is getting a facelift. And you all are going to be the first to see it. Now, the purpose of this webinar is to discuss what is Arc Memo Manager, to provide you with a first-hand look at the new Arc Memo Manager interface, to learn key Arc Memo Manager functionality, and lastly, to learn best practices for working debit memos. So in case you're not familiar with Arc Memo Manager, Arc Memo Manager or Memo Manager is basically a web-based product that facilitates and automates the distribution, processing, and settlement of adjustment memos between ARC participating airlines to our ARC accredited agencies. So basically, airlines, they when they issue their adjustment memos, they upload them into Memo Manager. And once they're in Memo Manager, you have access, you have access to those memos. Now, the key features of Memo Manager is that you're able to pay memos, your memos, so I want to load it. You're able to dispute memos, so if you receive a memo and you're not in agreement with it, you are able to dispute it with the airline, and you're also able to send correspondence. You're able to send the airline correspondence in regards to a memo. Now, some of the benefits of Memo Manager is that one of the main benefits is that uh, memos are automatically loaded into IAR. Again, airlines, they will upload their memos into Memo Manager. They would either send RPA automatic file, or they could actually enter memos directly in Memo Manager. And this reduces processing time and cost. Once those uh, memos are loaded, you basically you have easy access to the memo data. You can see the status of the memo, so you can see whether you have new memos or if agent actions are required if a memo is in dispute pending. So again, you're able to see the status of a memo. It also simplifies communications. Again, you're able to communicate directly with an airline on a memo. So in Memo Manager, you're able to send the airline a message in real time, and they're able to respond or send your correspondence in real time as well. All memos that are loaded into Memo Manager or stored into Memo Manager for 39 months. So you have up to 39 months worth of Memo Manager data. Now, the primary users of Memo Manager is ARC's participating airlines, uh, you, the agencies, as well as the GDSs. Um, as an agent, you are able to give a GDS access to a memo. And you may want to give a GDS access to a memo because you need them to do research on a memo that you got. You may have received a memo and you're disputing it because maybe let's say the memo was uh, was issued because of an incorrect fare and the ticket that's in question was auto priced to your GDS. So you may give that GDS access to the memo so they could do research on their end to support your dispute. Now, Judy had mentioned uh, earlier that um, Memo Manager uh, is going to get basically get a facelift. Um, it's going to have a redesign of the user interface. So basically, uh, Memo Manager is going to go on a new platform, which is going to have enhanced technology. You as the user, basically, um, you're not going to see any difference in functionality. The functionality is going to remain the same. 
However, the look and feel of Memo Manager is going to be a little bit different. You'll notice that um, the uh, new Memo Manager look uh, incorporates ARC's branding a little bit better. Uh, navigation through Memo Manager is going to be a little bit a little easier. And the performance of Memo Manager is going to be a lot faster and smoother. So those are some of the things that you will notice on the uh, new platform for Memo Manager. So why don't we go ahead and go into Memo Manager and take a look. So Memo Manager, of course, is you access it through MyArc. So I'm going to go ahead and log into MyArc. And once I'm logged into MyArc, I'm going to go to the Your Tools section and click Memo Manager. And then once I select Memo Manager, uh, we're navigated to the Memo Summary page or the Home page. And this is the new look and feel of Memo Manager. You know, I mentioned earlier that, you know, and it incorporates Arc's branding, so you'll see our uh, our colors. Uh, the navigation is a little bit easier. Uh, you'll have uh, more enhanced uh, navigation buttons, and it's easier to scroll through. Now, behind the scenes, like if Memo Manager, you know, should uh, be a lot faster and smoother as well. So again, uh, the functionality of Memo Manager hasn't changed. Uh, everything that you are able to do today, uh, you will be able to do in the new Memo Manager when that launches. And I believe we have a launch date of February 13th. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through some of the key functionalities of Memo Manager. So we're on our Memo Summary page, and the Memo Summary page is going to lists all the memos that were issued to the agency. And the memos are going to be listed by ARC number, the airline that issued the memo, the airline, the three-letter airline code, excuse me, the airline name, excuse me, the memo number, the memo type, whether it's a debit memo, a credit memo or a recall commission statement. It's going to have the current balance of the memo, the secondary status of the memo, such as pen, excuse me, payment pending, reactivated, dispute pending. It's going to have the age of the memo, so it's going to let you know how old the memo is. It's going to have the resolution type of the memo, whether the, re the resolution is coming from the airline or carrier or is it a ticket resolution services resolution, MRS, or TRPS? And then lastly, it's going to have the last correspondent who made the last correspondent on the memo, whether it was the agency, the airline, or the GDS if they have access to the memo. Now, the memos are going to be listed. Um, you'll see the memos are going to be categorized into four tabs open, close, and active, and all. The open tab is going to display all of your open memos, and that's going to be your primary status of the memo. If the memo was closed because you paid the memo or if the airline closed the memo, it's going to fall under the close tab. Your inactive memo, your inactive tab is going to display memos that are currently inactive, and memos become inactive when they reach their age limit. When an airline, when they assign and issue a memo to you, they set an age limit for that memo. And if no activity has been done within that time frame, the memo then becomes inactive. And then the last tab is going to display 
all of your memos. So that's going to be your open, closed, and inactive memos. Now, as an agency, your primary focus is going to be on your open memos. So these, you know, under your open tab, this is where you're going to be doing your work and your research on your different memos. Now, depending on your role at your agency or the memos that you need to see, you may not need to see all of the memos that were issued to your agency. There may be specific memos that you need to work on or that you need to view. So you could actually customize your list of memos by performing different searches. So I'm going to scroll up to the top of the page. Now, there are a few different search options that are available. Uh, the first one is your quick view search, where you're able to search by memo numbers or by the memo that you last worked on or viewed. So let's say I wanted to pull up the memo that I last worked on or viewed. I would just click the memo's last view link. And it will take me into the memo manager, will take me into the memo that I last worked on or viewed. Now to go back to my memo summary page, I'll just click the memo summary link and that takes me back. Now let's say I want to display a memo by memo number. So I know the memo number of the memo that I need to go into. Under the quick view section, under memo numbers, just click memo numbers link, select the carrier that issued the memo, and then I can type in the memo that I want to pull up. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a memo number. And Daryl, we have a few questions here. Um, can we uh, ask those, or do you want to continue on and then we'll take a break in a little bit? Yeah, let me continue on with this um, functionality I'm about to do, and then we'll pause. Okay, great. Thank you. So um, when you're doing a search by memo number, you're able to search up to 50 memos. Uh, if you're searching by if you're searching for more than one memo, when you're entering the memo number, just make sure you separate each memo number with a comma. And then when, once you finish entering your numbers, just click View. And then Memo Manager will take you into the first memo that you entered. And to go to the next memo, just click the next link, and that will take you to the next memo. And then again, to return back to your memo summary page, just click the memo summary link. And Judy, I believe we have some questions. Yeah, we do. And um, Daryl and Sarah, I'm going to ask these, and I think Sarah's going to take a few of these to start off with. Um, but the first one is regarding inactive memos, is there a way for an agency to determine what time frame was set by the airline? Uh, currently today, uh, that is not available. Um, that's only available to the uh, to the airline. So the Agency will not be able to determine what the uh, what the age age limit or time frame is. Okay, uh, I can. This is Sarah. Hi, everybody. I can add that the best practice is 90 days, and we ask that all airlines stick to that. But no, there's no way for you to see that. Okay, and I think this is another. And we're going to just go to another couple of questions here before we continue on. The next one is: Can the font be changed to be darker or more solid? The fonts are more difficult to read. So, is there anything that can be done um, with this new look and feel to change those font colors? I can certainly look into it, but not before we roll it out. Okay, so great. So, good questions. And yes, so, there. Are, yep, you can put that on your backlog. So, this I think is a really um, good question. It's more global. Um, will this, with this new memo manager, the new look and feel, so to speak, um, is that on a new platform or is it just change the look and feel? So, we just changed the look and feel, and it does not, um, I'm looking at it, does it change the look or feel of, um, the analyzer Excel reports, it doesn't, no, it doesn't. It doesn't change the look of anything. It really is just what you're seeing now. 
Okay, great. So it yeah, it doesn't impact any reports. It does not impact memo analyzer. It, it's really just pretty much when people come in, it may have a little bit different look and feel. Yes. And I think that's really what we're trying to convey here this afternoon, plus kind of a general overview of the tool. So I think that's a really mm -hmm. important question. It is. So awesome. And then um, I think, Daryl, you do have some documents here, a best practices document. And um, it says, is there a training document for this new AM? Um, Basically, it's look and feel. I think but you do have some documents we can provide. And we do have, we have updated the user guides. So we're happy to make those available. They have new screenshots, but I want to be clear that no functionality has changed at all. So it works exactly like the previous version. Okay, great. And I think um, what we'll do is we'll continue on. I know there's some other questions that have come in, but I'm going to turn it back over to Daryl to continue on and we'll get to these questions. Again, these are really good. Keep asking them throughout the presentation. Daryl, back over to you. All right. So we just took a look at the uh, quick view search option. Another uh, search option to use is uh, to search by ARC number or by carrier or airline. Uh, if you're um, if you're an agency and you have branch locations, uh, you're able to pull up memos for your specific locations. Under the ARC number text box, just type in the ARC number location that you want to view and then click the search button and your memos for that office location will be listed below. Now, for example, if you want to search or pull up memos for all of your locations, that's your home location and branch locations, in the ARC number text box, just type in the ARC number of your home location, click the Include Entire Organization checkbox, and then click your search button. And then Memo Manager will display all of your memos for your entire entity. So that would be memos for your home location, as well as your branch locations. Similar to doing a search by ARC number, you could do a search by carrier. In the carrier text box, you could either type in the carrier or airline name or three-digit code. So let's say if I wanted to do a search for uh, Delta Airlines, I could just click, type in Delta, and then Memo Manager, will, based on what I'm typing, will pull up matches based on what I'm typing. So you'll see Delta Airlines, oops, it's displayed below, so I can just select that and then click the search button and then Memo Manager will display memos for Delta Airlines. And you'll see I have no uh, memos uh, for Delta Airlines. Similar to typing in the agency name, I could type, excuse me, the airline name, I could type in the three-digit uh, carrier code or airline code for that airline, click search, and then Memo Manager will display memos uh, for that airline below. Now below your ARC number or airline or carrier search options is our dashboard. Now the dashboard is divided into two sections, Memo Aging on your left, and memo activity on the right. Now, memo agent actually categorize the memos based on their age range. And the age range are 91 plus days, 61 90 days, 31 60 days, and zero to 30 days. Now, for each age range, it's gonna provide the number of open memos and the current balance, as well as the total number of memos and the current balance for all of your memos. So for example, for 91 plus days, I have one memo, and the current balance is $340.60. For 61 to 90 days, I have six memo, open memos with a current balance of $970. And for 31 to 60 days, I don't have any open memos. And for zero to 30 days, I have 10 open memos with a current balance of $1,590. And to display those memos, I could just click the age range link. So I'm gonna do 61 to 90 days. And below, it will display a list of memos that fall within that age range. And you'll notice under my search area, 
there's a description box that describes the search that I just did. You'll see the box says age, 61 to 90 days. Now to go back to my default settings, I can either click the clear button or in the description box, just click the delete icon. And it goes back to my default settings. Now one of the nice things about memo aging is that you can actually view or action the memos that are the oldest. One of the best practices uh, that we recommend when working your debit memo is to review and action your oldest memos. So me as an agent um, looking at my memos, I would want to work on the memos that fall under 91 plus days. And again, I only have one open memo. So over on the right, we have memo activity and memo manager is going to categorize those memos by the activities that they fall under. Now, the different types of activities are correspondence in the last 10 days, memos that are currently being disputed, memos that are nearly aged, they're reaching their age limit, and memos uh, with a payment pending, meaning that the memos were paid through Memo Manager, loaded into your IR sales report. However, they're in a pending status until you actually submit your sales report. Similar to uh, the memo aging, the memo activity is going to provide the number of open memos for those activities, as well as the current balance. So for correspondence in the last 10 days, I have one open memo with a current balance of $450. For a dispute, memos that are being disputed, I have three open memos with a current balance of $550. Memos that are nearly aged, I have six open memos for $970. And for a payment pending, I have uh, two open memos for $550. And to display the memos, or excuse me, to list the memos, I could just click the memo activity link. I'm going to do dispute it. And then those memos will be listed below. And under the search option, I have a description box that describes the search that I just performed, secondary status, dispute pending. To go back to my default settings, I could just click the clear link or the delete icon within the uh, search description box and go back to my default settings. Now, I want to go back to nearly age. There was a um, question earlier regarding uh, is there a way that you could tell, you know, when a memo is, is reaching its age limit or what the time frame is that's set by the airline. And right now there is, you know, you're not able to see the time frame that is set by the airline. However, Memo Manager does provide you with the option to be able to see or to, to pull up memos that are reaching their age limit. So under uh, nearly age, I have six open memos that are reaching their age limit. And so this tells me that, you know, if I don't take any action on them soon, they're going to go into an inactive status. Okay, great, Daryl. Can we just pause here for a moment? Because we have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, and this one is, how do we invoke the GDS when a ticket was not forced? So this is Sarah again. Great question. GDSs do not have the same uh, ability to manage memos as a travel agency or a carrier in Memo Manager. They can only view or correspond. If the memo that is issued has a ticket on it, you can assign the memo to the GDS, and Daryl will probably walk through that functionality, or you would need to contact the GDS directly. Okay, great. Thank you, Sarah. And then this, I think, is a good question as well. Um, is there a way uh, to have debit memos from airlines that have gone out of business that are still in Memo Manager um, as active to be removed? And, and what is the process for that? So we do not remove data from Memo Manager. I'm aware that it still shows. Um, we have started archiving data, so you shouldn't see any more than 39 months. And a lot of times, just to give you a little background, K 
carriers or airlines ask for the debit memos. There's a whole process done with our carrier <clears throat> airlines team where they keep them open for a certain amount of time. Um, if you're asking, can at some point they be removed, no debit memo data is ever deleted, but we could remove it visually meaning you would not see it. So we will take that as an action item to look into. Okay, great, because now from this call alone, from this session, you've got a couple, Sarah, yeah. on your list. So that's great. So keep asking the questions. Daryl, I'm just going to do a couple more, and I'm going to let you continue, okay, because I don't, they're building up here. Yeah. Um, are these functionality limitations with certain browsers? I don't seem to be able to upload documents to uh, Memo Manager with certain browsers. So are there browser limitations to the tool? Does that make a difference which one they're using? Well, we always recommend that you use either uh, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, or Safari, and I'm using Safari. And do you have any, you don't have any. I have not yeah. heard this. As the product manager, I have not heard of any limitations, but we can certainly take that as an action item and ask our tech team. Yeah, because it's a good question. It's a great right question. Well, if you can't upload a document, it's problematic. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. So we'll find out. <laughs> great, great. Um, with this new memo manager, and it again, look, feel, not platform per se, um, will give the capability of paying by credit card. No. <clears throat> We are not at this point um, have the functionality to allow to pay by a credit card, uh, nor do we see that happening in the future. Um, and then this is an, another question, and then um, I'm going to ask just two more, and then I'm going to turn it, Daryl, back to you to get uh, on with the presentation. Um, when we gave access to a GDS, when should um, we receive a reply? I guess it's really up to the GDS. It's up Sarah. to the GDS. Yeah, right, so we have really no control. We have no control. Um, and then the next one is, can you pull up for three of 10 total IATA numbers and one HOL and save that search? Does that make sense? Yes, you can. So under the uh, search area, I'm just gonna highlight my uh, on my screen, just click edit search. And then actually let me see. Scroll down. And while um, Daryl, did you find that information yet? I was going to ask another question to Sarah here if you're still looking. Okay. Um, can chargebacks be disputed in the new memo manager? Again, not platform, but can they be disputed? Yes. Nothing has changed. No functionality has changed. Now, going back to the previous question with the uh, search for the uh, multiple ARC numbers, I'm going to have to take that offline and uh, dig a little bit deeper. Okay, great. Thanks, Daryl. Again, didn't mean to be confusing there, but I thought I'd ask Sarah a question while you were kind of looking. <laughs> okay, Daryl, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Again, everyone, keep asking questions. These are really good ones um, and giving our team here some stuff to uh, go back and research. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so the uh, last uh, search option uh, you could do under your under the search area, click the Edit Search, and here you can actually uh, customize the, uh, your different uh, your different uh, searches. Um, and these are the different uh, search options that you have, such as secondary status, age, agency name, supplier, reason category. So let's say I'm going to do a search for a reason category, and it's going to be commission. So on the reason category drop down menu, I'm going to select commission, and my memo reason is going to be non-commissionable. So I'm going to pull up all the memos that were issued uh, because of an invalid commission. So I have my options. So I'm going to go ahead and click update results. And then memo manager are going to, is going to display all memos with a reason category commission and the memo reason non-commissionable. And you'll see my description box under the search area. 
So I'm going to go ahead and clear this and then go back into my edit search. Now let's say at my agency, I only work on memos that were issued because of a of commission, of an invalid commission. And so these are the only memos that I need to view. So I could actually, when I'm performing the search, I can actually save it. So I'm just going to select it again. Memo reason category, commission, memo reason, non-commissionable. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. Select Save This Search. And then a Save Current Search window is going to display. And it's going to prompt me to name the search. So I'm just going to say DS Commission. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. So this has been saved. And if I close this out and go back to my search area to my Save Searches, so I'm going to click Save Searches. A save searches window will appear and it's going to have all of my saved searches. So you'll see the one that I just did, DS Commission, is listed below. And if I double click the name, it's going to display all of those memos with that reason category and memo reason. Now, if I go back into my edit search and using the uh, same uh, search options that I selected, reason category commission, non-commissionable, and go back to save the search. Let's say I um, want to make this my default search, meaning that every time I launch Memo Manager, I want this to display. So I'm going to go ahead and name, give this another name. Yes, commission. Say default, and I want to make this my default search. So I'm going to select the run the search on login checkbox, click save. So my search has been saved, and I'm going to exit out the edit search, and I'm going to close Memo Manager, and I'm going to relaunch it. So I'm going to go back in. When I go back in, Memo Manager automatically runs my uh, save search with my default search. For a reason category commission, memo reason non commissionable. So Memo Manager automatically runs that because it is my default search. Now, going back to my save searches, if there is a uh, search that I no longer need, I could go ahead and delete it. Select the delete button. If there's a default search that I have, I can remove that default. I can also make another search my default. So those are the options that you have uh, when performing a search when within Memo Manager. And depending on you know the 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 memos that you need to research or the ones that you actually work on, you know, will define, you know, how you use the different search options within Memo Manager. So let's go, I'm going to clear the search to pull up all my memos. And so let's go back to our list of memos. Now within your list of memos, uh, from your list of memos, you have uh, different options that you could that you could perform uh, within Memo Manager. You could export your, your memos. You could pay a group of memos. You could dispute a group of memos. Uh, you could uh, add attachments to a group of memos. So let's take a look at some of those different options. So let's say I want to export a group of memos. So I'm going to select the memos that I want to export. And then under the Select Actions drop-down menu, I'm going to select Export. And my export options, like export to export to a CSV format, PDF, or text format. So I'm going to go ahead and export to a CSV format. So I'm going to select CSV and then click Export. 
And once I click export, you'll notice that uh, my option it went down to my download folder. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. It's going to go to retrieve my download. And here is the export that I just did uh, to a CSV format. And when I export, it's going to provide all of the data that is associated uh, with the memo. And when you export to a CSV, you can actually save it to an Excel, Excel format. You can save it to your computer. You can email it. You're able to sort. So there's a lot of different things that you could do uh, when you do export the memos into, into another format. So we'll go ahead and close this out. So. so let's say I want to pay a group of memos. So I can select the memos that I want to pay. Or accept. Under select actions, I'm going to select pay. A paid memos window is going to appear. It's going to provide me with the number of memos that I selected. It's going to have the number of valid memos and the uh, valid memos balance. And you'll notice that um, the balance is a negative $80. Is because I'm also going to I'm accepting a credit memo. So these are these two memos are actually credit memos. So that's why the balance is a negative eighty dollars. So I'm going to go ahead and submit payment. And once I select select payment, it gives me a payment summary. So I'll have the number of memos that are sent to IER, uh, memos that are queued to be sent, and if the process uh, if the process was uh, successfully sent or if it failed. Now, because I'm in a test environment, the number of memos that were sent to IER is zero, and the process fails because I not actually connected uh, to IER in this uh, test environment. And below, it would actually have the number of memos. It would, excuse me, it would have the uh, memos listed below. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now, similar to paying a, a group of memos, you could dispute a group of memos. And I'm going to select the memos that I'm going to dispute. And then under Select Actions drop down menu, select Dispute. A dispute memos window appears. It has the number of memos that I'm disputing. Uh, it has the full balance uh, box checked by default. Or if I want to make a partial dispute, I can select the partial balance radio button and then enter the amount that I want to dispute. Say seventy-five dollars, and then you would be required to add a comment. And if you have any supporting documentation, you can upload a file, and then to go ahead and send your dispute. Just click dispute memos. A summary of your dispute will display. You'll see I have two memos that were disputed, and it's going to indicate whether the dispute was, was successfully uh, sent or if it failed. Great. Thank you, Daryl. Um, is this a good time to take a little break and get some questions in? Okay, awesome. Uh, this one is, when doing a search, does the dashboard at the top change to? 
that. What does it change to? Um, does it change? No, okay. it does not. Yeah. It does not change. And the next question of are there any changes yeah. to the flex fields? Yeah. No, there are no functionality changes at all okay. in this new version. We call it a lift and set. The old version was changed to a new platform as is. Okay, um, going back to the dashboard, to the question regarding the dashboard, the only time that it will change, let's say, um, let's say if we look at memo aging, uh, if I under memo aging, if I pay for a memo or if a memo was closed by the airline, that memo will then fall out of the uh, memo aging uh, category. And then also under um, memo activity, uh, if I have a memo, let's say, in a payment pending status, once I submit my IR sales report, that memo is going to close and it's going to fall out of that memo activity. Okay, great. Good, good. Thanks, Sarah and Daryl on that one. And then this one is just a clarification. Um, if a person reviews a memo, um, it's still considered open, meaning that it's not paid, correct? Right. correct. Um, or does it mean that the memo was never looked at? Right. So when you when you receive a new memo from an, from an airline, the primary status is going to be new memo, meaning that you haven't done you haven't opened it at all. Once you open the memo, you go into it. Uh, that status is going to change to agent action required meaning that you've actually opened the memo, you've gone into it, now you need to take some sort of action on that memo. Okay, good, thank you. Here's another one. Um, so to, again, another clarification to reconfirm. Um, if we can only, dis can we only dispute memos by sending the details in the dispute section and then go back and forth um, with them? So is that the only way to dispute a memo? Right, so when you're disputing a memo, uh, you're going to initiate the dispute in Memo Manager, and you have to add, you know, some type of correspondence uh, to that dispute. You have to indicate why you're disputing the memo. And best practice is to provide as much information or your know, clarity uh, to the reason why you're making the dispute. Um, and this is Sarah. I want to add something to that. Just to be clear, the only way to dispute a memo in Memo Manager is to click the dispute button. Okay. Um, when you click the dispute button, then you are forced to add comments, but it's clicking the dispute button that actually does the action. Okay, so if something was added or attached and they don't click dispute, then that memo is not actually being disputed at that time. Oh, okay. correct. Good. I think that's um, great clarification. Um, Daryl, I'm going to go to one more question and then I'm going to let you continue back on. Um, this one says in, in memos, uh, there are two dates issued and loaded. These dates are not always the same date. I process payment and or dispute within 30 days on my memos. If the load date is after the issue date, I mark 30 days from the load date. Why the two dates? Why are what is the difference of the two dates? Does as do I need to repeat that or no? The okay. load date is when it came into Memo Manager. So in, that carriers um, have the ability to load memos three times a day automatically, or they can manually. And it literally is when it comes into Memo Manager. Issue date is the date it was issued. The memo was issued, and so carriers issue memos many times before they load them. And so that's why there's the disparity. Okay, great. And it, that's kind of similar logic to when you're issuing ticket transactions through your GDS, so you're gonna have the issue date and you're gonna have the IR load date when it was loaded into IR, so it's kind of similar. Okay, thanks, uh, Daryl and Sarah. I think that helps clarify that. Um, Daryl, I'm gonna let you continue on. All right. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my list of memos. Now, let's say you want to go into a memo. Uh, there's two options that you have. Uh, you could select the memos that you want to go into, and then under the Select Actions drop-down menu, select the View button, and it's going to take you into the first memo that you selected. To view the next memo, you'll just click the Next link, and that will take you into the next memo. 
I'm going to go back to the memo summary page. Now you can also, to go into a memo, just click the memo number link and that will take you into the memo as well. So here I am in a memo. So this is the memo details page of a memo. And this is where you're going to spend the majority of your time uh, doing your research and uh, work, actually work in the memo. So the memo details page is going to have the memo number by default. At the top, it's going to provide you with the option to pay, dispute, or dispute the memo, print the memo details, or export the history of the memo. Now, below the memo number section is the general, the general information section on the memo. So here's you're going to you're going to find general information about the memo. So you're going to have the memo type, for example, debit memo. It's going to have the original amount that the memo was issued for. In this case, it's $150. It's going to have the current balance of the memo. So if you made if you made a partial payment, it's going to have the uh, the difference uh, from the from the original amount. It's going to have the carrier that issued the memo, the three-digit carrier code, along with a link to their ticketing policy website. Next, it's going to have the agency name along with the ARC number. It's going to have when the balance was last updated. And it's going to have the passenger name of the passenger of the ticket that's in question. If this memo was issued by a supplier, it would have the supplier code. Uh, if not, it will have the airline code if, the, if it was issued by the airline. And then the age of the memo. Below, is the memo details tab. The first section of the memo details tab is the status. Here is where you'll find the issue date when the memo was issued by the airline, the load date when it was actually loaded into, into memo manager. If this memo was settled in IR, if it was paid and settled in IR, it would have the IR settled date. Next, it's gonna have the, set, the status of the memo the primary and secondary status. In this example, the primary status is open. The secondary status is agent action required. Next is going to have the last modification date, so when the memo was last modified. If this memo was in, became inactive because it reached its age limit and then the carrier reactivated the memo, it will have the reactivation date. Next, it will have the, re the resolution type of the memo. In most cases, it's going to be carrier. If this is a TRS reason, ticket resolution services, it would have the TRS reason, such as unreported sale or chargeback. Below is the ticket information. So this memo uh, was issued uh, with a ticket in question. It's going to have the ticket information for that ticket. Next is our correspondence area. So here is you'll be able to read any correspondence that was sent by the airline, or you are able to uh, send correspondence uh, to the airline. Now you'll notice that there are three tabs on the correspondence, public, private, and all. Your public correspondence is gonna show correspondence that was sent or received uh, to the airline. Private correspondence is going to show correspondence that's internally within your organization, so the airline will not have access to this. And then the All tab is going to display a combination of your public and private correspondence. To add correspondence to a memo, just click Add to Correspondence Link. The correspondence window will appear, and you can type in your message. And if you want to send this to the airline, just go ahead and click the Add to Correspondence button. And then under the Public tab, the message that I just sent, I do not owe this, appears. It's going to have a date and time stamp, my username, and my ARC number. Now, if I want to send a private correspondence, so that's internally within my organization, so I'm going to click Add to Correspondence Link, type in my 
message. And I'm going to check make this correspondence private and then click the add to correspondence button. And you'll notice the message that I just sent is not viewable under the public tab. However, if I click the private tab, you'll see the message is there. Sarah, please call the airline. And again, it's going to have a date and time stamp, my username and ARC number. And if I click the all tab, it's going to display a combination of both my public and private correspondence. Now, going over to the right-hand side of the page is our memo reasons. And the memo reasons is where the carrier or airline identifies why they're issuing the memo. So they're going to have the reason category, and it's going to be, in this issue, it's for a booking violation. The memo reason is because of churning, and then under the reason note, it has churning. And if you're not familiar with the reason, uh, the uh, definitions of the reasons, you can just click the reason definitions and a PDF will display that provides um, all the definitions for the, uh, re the different reasons that you can receive. You can also, under agency reasons, uh, is a free flow text box that you could type in an eternal reason within your organization. And a lot of agencies like to uh, basically add notes in this section so they could do queries on their, on their end. And then click Save Changes. Now, for some reason, uh, you receive a memo and you take a look at the memo reason and you don't agree with this memo reason. So let's say I look at this, I see uh, the memo reason is for uh, booking and it's because of churning and I don't agree with this. So I could actually send the airline a message, you know, asking them to change the reason or change the reason to something that I think it should be. And to do that, I could click the Request Reason Changes link. It's going to provide uh, my current reason category and memo reason. And then I can request them to change it to something else. So let's say for a reason category, um, I'm going to say miscellaneous. And then under memo reason, I'm just going to select other miscellaneous and then click save and they'll see i on my memo reason area i have a message change requested so on the airlines end you know they will get this they will get this request so below memo reasons we have attachments here you'll be able to view any attachments that the airline um, uploaded to the memo you could actually upload any uh, supporting documents that you have to um, to uh, make your to, when you're submit when you let's say making a dispute to upload an attachment. Just click Add File, select your um, you could select your attachment, and click, <laughs> and then I got the um, error message uh, file size greater than 10 uh, megabytes, so there is a file size restriction. So let's go ahead and close that. I'm not sure what file that was. But once I upload a document, you know, the airline, they will be able to view that as well. Under next, we have memo financial details, which is going to provide a financial computation of the memo. It's going to tell you um, the ticket in question how the ticket should have been issued. So it's going to give you your airline or carrier computation. It's going to provide you with the agent computation, how the agent or how you issued the ticket. And the difference between the two is going to be actual the memo amount. So that will give you a financial law, financial look on why the memo was issued. Next we have disputes. So if you want to dispute a memo, you have uh, two options. 
you can click the dispute memo link or at the top of the page, click the dispute button. Both are gonna give you the same results. So I'm gonna click the dispute memo link. The dispute window is gonna appear. It's gonna have the current balance of the memo and I can dispute the full amount or make a partial uh, make a partial payment. So I'm going to dispute the full amount. Then I'm going to add my comment. And if I have any supporting documents, I can upload it. And then once it's done, click submit. And my dispute has been submitted. And then under dispute areas, it's going to provide an audit of that dispute. So it's going to have the uh, dispute date, the amount, the user who made the dispute, and then the status of the dispute. I'll see the status is currently pending, meaning that it has been sent to the airline and the airline has to take action whether they're going to accept or reject the dispute. Next, we have uh, entity-specific information or flex fields, and these are six data fields that you can use at your leisure, and a lot of agencies use this to add notes, and if they're able to run queries on based on the data that they enter into the uh, flex fields. And click apply and any any um, data that you um, any data that you enter into the flex bills are only viewable by you your agency not the airlines or the GDS if they have access to the memo paying a memo uh, is very easy similar to disputes uh, under the payment section uh, you have two uh, payment options, uh, IR payments and non-IR payments. Uh, IR payments are payments that are paid directly in Memo Manager and sent to IR for settlements. Uh, if you're gonna send an IR payment, you can click the IR Pay link, or at the top of the page, click the Pay button. Both will give you the same option. So let's say if I go ahead and pay this memo, it's gonna provide me with the current balance of the memo. Here I have the option to pay the full amount or I can pay a partial amount. So let's say I only want to pay $75. And then I'm gonna type in a message and then click submit. And then once I send my payment, it's going to be captured under the IR payment section. It's going to have the submission date, the user who made it, who submitted the payment, the amount. If it was sent, when it's sent to IR, it's going to have the IR transaction number. I'm in a test environment, so that's why the transaction number is blank. The status is actually going to be pending, meaning that Memo manager is waiting for me to actually submit my IR sales report. I have also the IR settle, IR settle date, and then the settle the uh, settled amount. Um, Daryl, I'm just going to interrupt quickly. Um, there is some more information you want to share. Is that correct? Um, and how many more minutes do you think that will be, Daryl? How many more minutes? Eight minutes. Like eight minutes. So for those of you that are on the call, I just wanted to interrupt um, to let you know that this recorded session will be posted on our website. It's under training, and then you go to the right-hand 
side and you'll see webinars on demand next week. We'll get this um, up and running and posted for you. Uh, and also the questions that are asked that we um, will not be able to get to the rest of them today, I will forward these on to Sarah, um, the product manager, and Daryl. Uh, to respond directly to these questions. Um, and Daryl does have some documents also um, that we're going to look to post on our website as well. So again, please uh, feel free to those that are leaving us um, at 3 o'clock with any questions, call into our customer care center at uh, CCC help at arccorp.com or 1-855-816-8003. So thank you everyone that's leaving us. Um, the rest of you stay on. Uh, we're going to take a few more minutes here on the webinar. Uh, and again, hope to see you next time. Thank you. Daryl? All right. So I'm going to jump down to GDS access. So um, now you are able to give a GDS access to a memo. Um, let's say um, the reason you may want to give GDS access is because you're disputing a memo because the memo uh, was received because of an incorrect fare and it was issued uh, auto price uh, through your GDS, let's say, uh, let's say uh, Sabre. And so you want to give Sabre access to your GDS so they could do research on their end. So to give GDS access to a memo under GDS access, just select the GDS you want to grant access to. And under this, uh, I've already granted uh, Amadeus access to this memo, so I'm just going to go to a different memo to show you. So I want to go back to GDS access. So I'm in a test environment, so I think that's why I'm having some difficulty showing you the list of GDSs. However, when you uh, select the uh, GDS access drop-down menu, it's going to provide you with a list of GDSs. You would select the GDS you want to grant access to, click the Save button, and then that GDS would have access to this memo. Now, when a GDS has access to a memo, they're only able to view the memo add correspondence and add uh, attachments or supporting documents to the memo. They're not able to pay the memo within Memo Manager for you, nor are they able to dispute a memo within Memo Manager. Uh, the payments and disputes, you know, are your responsibility. However, outside of Memo Manager, they can send you payments and then you could go ahead and pay the memo through Memo Manager. So that is uh, Memo Manager. I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint presentation. So best practices for working debit memos. So when you're working your best practice, when you're working your debit memos, uh, it's key to respond to your memos in a timely front in a timely uh, time frame. Uh, for debit memos, you should acknowledge the receipt of debit memos within 10 business days of issuance. Uh, for chargebacks, you should acknowledge them seven calendar days. Uh, seven calendar days. Uh, if you're going to dispute a memo, the dispute should be made within 30 calendar days of issuance. Also for disputes, uh, disputes should be done through Memo Manager. When you're making a dispute, provide specific information on why the memo is being disputed and to provide any supporting documentation. Best practice is to review and action your oldest memos. And when you're making payments, payments should be done directly through Memo Manager. You should pay a memo within 14 calendar days of determining that the memo is valid. Uh, pay a memo within 14 calendar days of receiving, receiving payment from the GDS. And if you're going to make a partial payment, uh, 
a payment plan should be agreed upon by the validating airline, or if you're making a partial payment because of a, a dispute, the dispute should first be made in memo manager and the airline should accept the dispute or the partial dispute. So those are the best practices for working uh, your debit memos. And that comes from our best practices for effective debit memo resolution and prevention. Uh, we're going to send out the entire document for you along with the presentation so you can see the actual, uh, all of the best practices uh, for effective debit memo resolution and prevention. So that is Memo Manager. Uh, we are going to conclude. Great. Thank you, Daryl, and thank you, Sarah. Um, there are questions here, like I said. Um, I'm going to send those forward those on to Sarah and Daryl. They'll be answering those directly. And thank you for those that stayed on the phone with us um, and gone over in our time slot. And we um, want you to uh, stay tuned. We do have um, a lot of webinars coming up this year. The next one, I believe it's February 26, and that will be on Real ID. So mark your calendars on that. Then we'll have a fraud session coming up in April. Uh, and then we will have some uh, product sessions coming up, some on ownership changes and accreditation. We'll have some industry sessions. So again, thank you all. Uh, and if you have any questions at all, uh, contact our customer care. And I'll just repeat that real quick, ccchelp at artcorp.com, 855-816-8003. Thank you very much. And my name is Judy, of course, and you can always reach out to me at jhoward at artcorp.com. Thank you all very, very much, and um, have a great rest of uh, your day. Thank you.